Do you see the darkness creeping up into the windowsills and overtaking the protruding light that's emitted through the glass? Do you see the darkness overtaking the light? I don't see that. I see light bursting through and it illuminates everything dark. Even a little bit of light. Each particle comes into contact with darkness and illuminates it. Darkness submits to the light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God in the beginning. All things were created through him, and apart from him, not one thing that was created was created. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness did not overcome it. Who is the word John is referring to here? Call it out. Jesus. Yes, you got all A pluses. Why was Jesus referred to as the Word? Now I'll make you think a little deeper. Why was Jesus referred to as the Word? You can shout it out. Okay. Any other thoughts? So Jesus was the Word. Jesus is the Word. And every word on every page of the Bible is Jesus. Why? Because God's power gets expressed through the Word. John said, All things were created through him, and apart from him, not one thing was created that had been created. God's power is expressed through the Word. Now let's look at a famous passage that I think probably all of you know, Genesis 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Then God said, let there be light. How did God say that? How did God say, let there be light? He shouted, he shouted it? Yes. He used his words. Only God's words have the power to create life using only words. Only God's words have the power to fracture darkness by beaming light. God said, let there be light. And there was light. His words were so powerful not only to remove darkness by bringing the light, but his creation of light, check this out, his creation of light separated the darkness to be submissive to the light. Where light exists, darkness cannot. Please turn down the house lights, guys, and let's get it as dark as we can in here. Even these. What do you guys see? Call it out. What do you see? Yeah. Specifically, what do you see the light doing? It's coming in through the door. Yeah. What else? Yeah, light is preventing darkness. Do you see the darkness creeping up into the windowsills and overtaking the protruding light that's emitted through the glass? Do you see the darkness overtaking the light? I don't see that. I see light bursting through and it illuminates everything dark. Even a little bit of light. Each particle comes into contact with darkness and illuminates it. Darkness submits to the light. Okay, you can turn the lights up. Let there be light. <laughs> So this light that we are seeing, that was created by God using spoken word. Can you believe that? 
Words God spoke created this light. And it's important to underscore, darkness and light are not two opposing forces. Light penetrates, eliminates, and overcomes darkness because of its purposely and appropriately assigned power. The power of the word. The power of Jesus. Thank you. Can I get a louder amen? Amen. Amen, yes. We have the opportunity to see Jesus when we see the light. John wrote, All things, there's a slide. There it is. All things were created through him, Jesus, and apart from him, not one thing was created that has been created. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness did not overcome it. Now, this passage here says so much, but we're going to pluck out that one sentence. That one sentence that says, In him was life, and that life was the light of men. This hyperlinks back to the creation story where God created humans. The writer of Genesis says, and I'm sure you've heard this many times, So God created man in his image. He created him in the image of God. He created them, male and female. Then the Lord God formed the man out of the dust from the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and the man became a living being. Now remember that passage from John. In him was life and the light. That life was the light of men. God breathed his life into humanity when he first created us. He breathed and he created us by using the power of his word, just like he did when he created light. He created humans like he created light, using words. God breathed his life into us. He breathed into us to give us life. John says that life, that life that we have inside of us, was the light of men. That life was the light. The light within us is what gives us life. The Word, Jesus, gave us light. Jesus is the light that penetrates the darkness around us, within us, and through us into the life of others. The light of Jesus is what continues to create and transform human lives. I used to be a man, Ryan, you're going to probably have to keep up with the the video there. I used to be a man who was uh, struggling with anger problems. I know you barely imagine it, huh? About 11 or 10 or 11 years ago, uh, Braden and Lisa and I were vacationing in Niagara Falls, and we were in our hotel room. But before I tell you that story, let me just underscore this, that little things would trigger me. This wasn't something that was a pet peeve that just irked me and I got upset. These were aggressive rage. Now, I was never physically abusive ever, but I was verbally and emotionally abusive almost daily. I intimidated them because of my anger. When we were in that hotel room, I can't even recall what triggered me that day. But I got upset and then raged. And I was yelling. And I was in their faces. My face was red. And it was in that moment I saw fear in their eyes. And it was in that moment that the Holy Spirit convicted me of that. So I sought help. The person who I used to be, the identity I had as somebody who was angered, is not who I am now. Because I am nothing like that. What happened in between was the power of the word, the power of Jesus transforming who I was into who I am now. Are you tracking with me here? The light of Jesus, that power transforms lives. Now let's do a quick summary. Light comes from God. Jesus is God. Jesus is the light. The Word is Jesus, and God's spoken Word created us. His breath gave us life. Jesus gave us life. Jesus is life. 
and that life is the light within us. Light is meant to shine. There's different forms of light, and they all serve a specific purpose. Let's play a video and watch about different forms of light. those lights. <laughs> Light is meant to shine. Let's tie all this together by taking our head knowledge and make it actionable for us. John goes on to say, God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. Here the word says, John himself was not the what? The light, yes. What was John supposed to do? What was his role to the light? Yes. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. And this is what we, as followers of Jesus, are also called to do, to be witnesses to tell about the light. And it's as simple as telling our stories, just like what I did about the person I used to be. My identity is not there. In fact, what, what maybe might upset me today, it takes a lot, actually. I have to be really, really hungry and not uh, having a lot of sleep that day, and then I might get a little irked, but it's not anything even close, not even remotely close, because Jesus has turned me into something far different. Light is meant to shine. So how do we shine the light? How do we shine the light of Jesus? I'm going to grab the whiteboard here. And my eraser disappeared. That's okay. Shout out ideas, thoughts that you have about how we can shine the light of Jesus. Words, phrases, thoughts, ideas. Just shout them out. Yeah. Smile. What else? Encourage, yes. Presence. What was that? Presence, Presence yes. Yes. Acts of kindness. Kindness, acts of kindness, yes. Good. Listening. Listening. That's a good one. Sometimes we don't need to use words, right? Oops. Don't mind me. Praise. 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 Sharing. Yes, sharing is caring, they say. Selfless behavior. Selfless behavior, yes. Any other thoughts? These are all good. How do we shine the light of Jesus? Any other thoughts? 
praying with others on the street. I'm going to shorthand that one. <laughs> praying with others. Very good. Grace. Ooh, amen. God showed his grace to us when he came and sent his son. Very good. A little tood, yes. Good attitude. Goes a long way. Any others? Giving. Giving. Who said that? Oh, there you are. Okay. Giving. Well, as you can see, there are many ways. And let's not get overwhelmed by all of these. We're going to focus on just one for today because I want you to have something to take away from. And if there's just one thing, this is, this is what we're going to focus on today. Presence. The ministry of presence. We are light in our community. We have the opportunity this week, on Wednesday, to go to Stella Olson Park for the music on the green. We, are the, we have the opportunity to be present there, to have our presence be there. On August 11th, 12th, and 13th, we have the annual garage sale, and we have another opportunity on all three of those days, and even several days leading up, starting next Sunday, to have our presence be part of the garage sale and to be here, shining the light of Jesus. Because there's people who are going to be in darkness at Stella Olson Park. There's people who are going to come to us here. Jesus is bringing them here because of our garage sale. It's not just about people dropping off their, their unwanted possessions that we sell. It's about getting people who are lost in the darkness to us. We have that opportunity to then shine the light of Jesus into that. And remember, the light of Jesus in us and coming out of us, it penetrates the darkness. And darkness cannot overcome it. Simply by bringing our presence into the darkness shines the light of Jesus. Do not be afraid. Dave Kelly shared a story with me last week, and I got his permission to share it today. He and Carol were visiting his sister in Idaho a few weeks back, and while they were there, he, they, they decided to go to his childhood home and check it out. So they knocked on the door, and the homeowner invited them in and showed them around so they can get an idea of what it looked like now. While they were there, the homeowner shared, there's strange things that happen in the house. In the, the laundry room, sometimes the, deter the detergent bottle flies across the shelf and crashes into the wall and drops down. And it happens pretty frequently. And Dave said, really? Can we pray for you about that? And they're like, oh, no, 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 no. We don't want that. We kind of like our friendly neighborhood ghost. And Dave's like, in his head, he's thinking, really? That's strange. And right as they were still talking about that, all the smoke detectors, fire alarm things, started blazing, blaring, and having lights protrude out of them. And they were right next to one in the hallway, and Carol got right up to it, looked at it, and said, shut up! And it stopped. Power of the word. Well, that's not the strangest thing. The homeowner grabbed it off the wall and said, hey, there's no batteries in this, and it's not hardwired in. <laughs> so they left. Dave and Carol prayed as they were leaving, and who knows what's happening to that house and their friendly neighborhood ghost. Hopefully it's gone. But whatever was there was submissive to the light that was in them. Amen. The light of Jesus. I'm going to close by reading out of this book 52 Hebrew words every Christian should know. What word do you think we're going to talk about today? Nice try. Yes, light. This is by David, Dave Adamson. Several times in the Bible... The followers of Jesus are called to be the light of the world. We are told to let our light shine in order to bring glory to God. And we're told to be full of light. The Hebrew word for light is or, which means to illuminate or dispel darkness. 
The idea behind the metaphor is that Christians are to illuminate moral, physical, emotional, and spiritual darkness. Another definition of or is to bring order to something chaotic. When you're stumbling around in the dark and you're trying to go to the bathroom at 3 a.m., it could be pretty chaotic, right? But then you switch on the light and you bring order to that chaos. When we care for people in need, when we show compassion to the hurting people, when we are standing up for justice or provide mercy, we are being the light to the world. Have you ever considered the different forms of light like we saw in the video? Some lights are designed to be helpful and bring safety. The sun's light brings life and warmth. While light bulbs and flashlights show us the way so we can see better. And then there's those, those lights we don't want to see, the flashing lights in the rear view mirror or the check engine light that was coming on in my car last week. I wonder how often we are more like a check engine light to the people around us whenever we lack compassion. When we lose our focus on winning, and when we, sorry, when we focus on winning an argument instead of sharing our faith, we are more like that flashing warning light. Or when we refuse to accept people who are different than us, we're kind of like that check engine light. But what about being a light that brings order to that chaos? How will you shine your light? Of Jesus today. Isaiah says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. A light has dawned on those living in the land of darkness. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord shines over you. Jesus said in Matthew 5 16, Let your light shine before others so that they can see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Now, here's my challenge for you today. Here's the one thing that I want you to take away from. What is one way, just one way, you will shine your light, the light of Jesus, this week? Let's pray. God, fill us with your holy fire so we shine the light of Jesus into the dark world around us. If there's anything dark within us, use your light to illuminate it and bring order back from the chaos. Help us surrender more to you and allow your light to shine. Give us boldness to take your light when we go and speak your word. Transform lives using our own story by the power of your word through us. In Jesus' name, 